Hi everyone, thank you for joining us for White Oak Library District's first virtual paint and sip. Tonight we're going to be painting a canvas of a lighthouse scene on the beach using red, white, blue, and black. Today's supplies, you will have to have a paint of each color, though you can go with any shade of blue or red as we will be blending, and then you'll just need a solid black and a white. You're going to want to have a cup of water to clean your brushes, paper towels are always important to have handy, and a variety of paint brushes. I recommend at least having a flat, wide head brush and at least one thinner angled brush. Additionally, you will need a blank canvas. We're going with an 11 by 14. However, you can customize this painting to any size canvas that you'd like. Let's get started. Now it's time to start painting. I have my canvas on an easel. However, when I'm at home, I usually have it flat on a tabletop or desk. Um, so if you're at home and you have it on a flat surface, that's usually how I do it when I'm not trying to teach while I do it. We're going to start with our red. Um, so you can go ahead and dip your brush. I am using the flat wide brush. So if you want to kind of use a bigger one for this one, we're going to be laying down a lot of our paint. To start, I'd like you to find the halfway mark on your canvas and then move down about two inches from there. What you're going to do is take your red and just do a big kind of flat line across. Now, as you can see from mine, it's not a perfectly straight line. That's okay. Most things in this world aren't actually perfectly straight. So what you're going to do is take some more red and just start to fill in. You want to get that canvas covered so you don't see the little white spots underneath. And you can just keep going to fill in. We are going to fill in about a third of the way up. So look at where your red is, visualize it into thirds, and then start filling in with that red paint. So Colleen, I wanted to ask you a few questions about your painting. So the first question I have is, what is your favorite book of all time and why? So that's a great question, um, and arguably one of the most difficult questions to ask the librarian. Um, but I've had a go-to response for this one for a while, which is that my favorite book of all time would be Ender's Shadow by Orson Scott Card. Many of you have probably heard of Ender's Game. Ender's Shadow is the same book, but from Bean's perspective, a different character's perspective. Alright, so as we're filling in with this red, remember we're going to do that first third of our little section there. You get a lot of red down, so we can start incorporating in a little white. The middle section is going to be white, but we're, that white is going to bleed into each of the other sections just a little bit. So you don't have to clean your brush since we're going to be blending. You can just go ahead and dip it in the white and start adding in a little bit of that white there. As you can see, it still looks mostly red, which is kind of what we're going for. It just lightens it up just a little bit so that we've now started blending. I would just keep adding more white along the top because remember, we only want that very bottom bit to be salad red. We're starting to look for a little bit of color difference. So I'm just blending in the white with red and I have both on my brush right now, which is all right. Our next section, or next third, we want to have a lot more white there. So I am going to clean my brush now. You can go ahead, dip it in your cup of water, swirl it around. So if you have paper towels on hand, you can go ahead and clean your brush. I typically use paper towels, um, even though it's not quite as good for the environment as just using a regular towel. Um, just because the paint can damage uh, materials, might not come off your fabric. So that's why I recommend you use a paper towel. Now I'm going to go in with some more white and I'm going to start filling in my middle section. As you can see, there is a little bit of residual red. I'm not completely avoiding getting red paint on my brush from the bottom section. And that's all red, because again, the concept is for everything to blend together. Mm -hmm. 
The white can be a bit hard to see on your canvas, since your canvas is white too, but just take a close look to make sure your paint is evenly covering the entire canvas and you aren't missing any spots. If you have too much red and that middle third is becoming too red, just clean your brush off again. That's what I'm going to do right now. It has a bit more red than I want. And I can go in with some more fresh white. Alright, while you're blending, the next question I have for you is what TV show are you currently obsessed with? Um, so the TV show I am currently obsessed with is in reality the TV show I'm always obsessed with and that's Supernatural. Um, if you haven't heard of it before, it currently has 15 seasons and is in the end of its last season. It follows two brothers, Sam and Dean, um, as they hunt monsters around the country. Um, yeah. All right, so now we have a lot of that white down. We have a little bit of the red blended up, but you see we do reach a point where it is pretty much solid white. So now we're gonna go ahead with the blue. Make sure to give your brush a really good solid cleaning at this point so that you have all the red out. If you need to switch your water, you can go ahead and do that. Sometimes if your water has too much paint in it, it's really hard to get it completely out of the brush. So now, when I go to do blue, instead of starting down here where the white ends, I'm going to start up at the top. And so we're going to do opposite of the red. How at the red we started at solid red and blended to white. Now we're going to start solid blue and blend down to the white. Starting at the top and doing a big old line of blue. Alright, while you're blending that bit, the next question for you is if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Uh, so, if I could go anywhere in the world um, and there wasn't a pandemic, I would go to um, Rome um, or to Athens. Uh, my bachelor's degree is in Greek and Roman history. Um, so for me, I think it'd be really cool to finally visit the place that I visit the places that I spent so many years studying. Now, as you put your blue on, your blue might be a little bit similar to mine, where as you can see, it looks kind of thinner. It's not like a solid blue right off the bat. But that's all right, because we're intending to blend white into it, so that see-throughness is actually gonna work in our favor. I'm gonna get one more big thing of blue on there. And then I'm going to start blending in my white. Now it's okay to get some blue in the white section. It's certainly okay to get some white in the blue section. Um, you just want to blend that around. As you see, the white really helps kind of even out the blue a little bit. So it looks more like a solid and less spotty like we have right here. You're going to come up with the best lines if you do big, long strokes. I occasionally do do some shorter ones to even things out, but when you finish it off, because you can see your brush strokes, just make sure you do some really big, nice, long ones that stretch the entire length of your canvas. Then take a look and decide is that how much you want? Do you want more blue? You really love blue? Go ahead and add some more blue in. It can be a larger section. Same thing for the red. If you want it to be a bigger section of it, you can. Um, but for this style, we've done about a third of each. 
And so now that is the upper portion of our canvas. All right, so now that we've finished our sky, it's time to put down the blue of the water. I'm again going to be using my big flat brush just to start drawing my lines. So we can go ahead and dip your brush in the blue. And basically, just right below where you did your red, you can start doing blue. Again, remember, don't need, you don't need to be too worried about doing a perfectly straight line. Most things in nature aren't straight. With the blue, since over here is going to be our sandbar, you don't need to take it all the way across. I recommend doing your blue about two-thirds of the way over, and then just filling in with blue all the way down. Alrighty, I'm going to ask you another question now. So the next question I have for you is, have you always liked to paint and or do art? I have. Um, so starting at a young age, I did the um, park districts or communities uh, art classes. I always really enjoyed doing those. That was a lot of painting ceramics. Um, around the time of high school, college, I got really into more crafting. Um, so finding different things to paint, like a wooden box or something of that nature. Um, and then starting later in college and through my life now, I've really taken an interest in doing canvases. So go ahead and keep filling in with your blue. Again, just like with the sky, don't worry about it being too thick. For, um, for our water, we're going to be adding in um, some different colors to kind of show that we're reflecting the sky. Um, so for right now, just get it covered in blue. Um, it doesn't need to be super thick, but you do want to get everything covered. Remember that this is going to be a sandbar here. It's going to kind of jut in and out. Um, it's best to not predetermine what this is going to look like. And now that you have your blue, just kind of do some, do some hills, round it out a little, maybe do a valley so it dips in. But just make your blue a little bit wavy. Have it jut out a little bit. We can also use our black to determine where that sandbar begins and ends. Um, but if you just add a little bit more blue, it'll kind of start to show your way. Alright, so now I'm going to go back to where I've done the blue and start getting that blue a little bit thicker. If you already have a really thick blue paint that's not showing through, you don't need to go through with quite as much. But if your blue is like mine and it's still showing a lot of white, just go ahead and start adding in some more blue to thicken it up. Now with the top where I recommended that you do solid lines, solid brush strokes all the way across, down here at the bottom for the water, it's going to actually look better if you do kind of short choppy ones, so it looks a little bit more like water, which is a bit more choppy. So keep filling in and just start using short brush strokes that you can see. Solid. What we're going to do is we're going to do some light blending. Up here at the top we did a heavier blend. We consistently blended the two. We did it quite vigorously so that they were really mixed together. 
Down here for your reflection, you don't want to mix the paint in quite as much. You do want to do it one or two times, but we don't want to completely mix it in. Because if we do that with the red, it's just going to turn the water purple. Um, so, we are done with our big brush. You can go ahead and clean that and set it to the side. And now I like you to use a smaller angled brush. You can really use one of any size or shape, um, just so that it's a bit more rounded. Um, we can start with our black, which I'm going to do just a teeny bit of this at the top. Now when I say a teeny bit, I really mean like the teeniest teeny bit. It is much better that you start by using way too little black than by adding too much and it's just going to turn the canvas black. So really just a tiny amount of black and I'm just going to do the black closer to the skyline. And I'm just going to do a few short strokes. I'm going to keep going over it in the same spot where I added it, but I'm just adding a little bit in there. As you'll notice, as I do it more, the black wears off the brush. That's kind of the point. Go ahead and clean your brush again. Get that black off of there. And you're going to do a similar concept with the white. Just get a little bit on your brush. You can do a bit more white than black. And just start blending that in. Remember not, not to over blend it. You aren't mixing the colors. You don't want to mix a new shade of blue. You want to still be able to tell that it's there. I'm going to add a little bit more white just because I've decided that my sky has a little bit more white in it. It's a little bit of a brighter day. So I'm just going to add a bit more white. Again, use short fluid strokes. You don't want to necessary have lines that go all the way across. And don't forget to do some lines that cut off on the edge of your canvas. Last, I'm going to do the red. Again, make sure you're cleaning your brush between each color. And same thing for the red. Be really careful that you aren't mixing. You don't want it to turn purple. But you do want the red to fade into the blue, which is why we're doing it while the blue is still wet, rather than waiting. I'm going to actually I put too much paint on there, so I'm going to rub some of that off. Go back for less, because less is more. And I'm just going to add in some red. Alrighty, while well, you're continuing to blend, the next question I have for you is what do you find the most rewarding about being a librarian? For me, I would say the most rewarding part about being a librarian is after I've given someone a book recommendation and the next time I see them or they come in and they ask me for another recommendation. It means not only did they really enjoy the book I recommended, which I'm happy that they enjoyed that book, um, but I love forming a relationship with someone where we can discuss books and they know that what I'm going to recommend is something that they're going to like. Um, as we're blending in here, feel free to do the same thing with blues, especially if you end up adding something and you feel like it's too heavy or coming across as too much, just blend some blue black over it. Again, we're just doing a light blend. We don't want to fully mix it. So don't go too heavy with it. But you can go ahead and just do it until you're pretty satisfied with how it turns out. want a little bit more from it, the best thing to do is to go back to your big flat wide brush, put some blue on it, and lay down some more blue. Again, be mindful of where you, as you've put the other colors, especially the red, so that you don't turn it completely purple. The best way to do this is again to just get your paint down, but not do too many brush strokes as you're doing it. But as you can see, this starts to fill it in a little bit more. You can see where your reflection was, um, but it's also a little bit more solid, a little bit more like water. With our sky, it was okay for the white to show through because that made sense with what we were looking at. 
down here for, for the water, we want it to be more solid. Um, and the best way to do that is to make your paint more solid, make your paint um, less see-through. Again, be mindful of where you have the red so that you don't turn into purple. second layer of blue can really even out the coat on the water. So our next step is going to be adding the foam to the edge of our water. For that, we're going to go back to our thinner, rounded, or angled brush. And what we're going to be using is our white paint along the edge. Again, remember as you're drawing your shoreline, this can go any way. You can have lots of dips, lots of ins and outs. Um, and what you're going to do is along the blue, you're going to have your brush covered in white and you're going to kind of do a jiggle. As you see, I'm not spinning the brush in circles. I'm not moving it too much, I'm just jiggling my hand back and forth while moving down the shoreline. It's okay for your brush to run out of paint while you're going. What you can do is kind of go back to that top and blend more of the paint down. And just follow that line that you created at the beginning. Again, I'm just using the paint I have from that one brush stroke we don't want it to be too white, we want to tell that it's foam. And I'm just following the shoreline all the way to the end. You can go over it one more time if you want. All the way to the end. And there's your foam. Alright, so that was putting down our first layer of foam. Now what we're going to do is fill in the sandbar. As you're doing with that with the black, don't worry about if you get over the foam you put down. We're going to do a second layer of foam so that it looks more natural. So for right now, I'm using my smaller brush just because it's easier to do the details. And I'm going to use my black paint. First thing I'm going to do is finish off the shoreline at the sky. And the next thing you have to do as you're going to have to move along the um, move along the waves, move along the foam that you put in. Again, don't worry about your line being perfect. Also, don't worry about if you go over the foam because we are going to do a second layer of that after the black dries. So for now, just make your way down the shoreline, filling in with black. Your lines here shouldn't be super perfect since it's supposed to look kind of like a shoreline, you know, usually sand, um, it's, it's not going to look perfect. So that works well with your lines here. as you're doing that scene, the next question I have for you is if you could be cast in a movie of your choice, what movie would it be and what character would you play? So before I answer that question, I'm just going to add one more thing in here, which is once you get to the bottom of your shoreline, you're just going to start filling in with black, just like you've already seen me doing. Um, so if I were to be cast in any movie, um, I would need, need to be in a Peter Jackson either Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit, anything um, within the Middle Earth universe I'd be okay with. Um, and if I had to choose a character to play, I would have to choose Galadriel just because she's in both trilogies and she gets to visit basically like all the different sets. Um, and as an actor, I would love to be behind the scenes to see all the many different sets that they created for those films.
All right, so now that the black's filled in, we're gonna let that dry. Once it dries, we're gonna go ahead and do a second layer on that foam. But for now, it's time to start drawing the lines for our lighthouse. Now, I don't want the lighthouse to intimidate you because really it's just a series of geometric shapes that we're gonna to put together. So when you think about it that way, you aren't drawing a lighthouse, you're gonna be drawing a rectangle, a few lines, and a triangle. All right, so somewhere over your black, you can decide depending how big your sandbar is. You know, if yours went over a little bit more, you have a bit more room to play with where you position it. But to start off, I know it's a little bit intimidating, it's a little bit scary, but just go right ahead and just draw a solid straight black line going from your skyline down to the black. Uh, for me, I'm doing my lighthouse about the third of the size of my canvas, so it's mostly going to stay within the red and white area. If you want to do your lighthouse a lot bigger, go ahead and make it a lot bigger. If you want your lighthouse to be really small, go ahead and make it much tinier so it's way further out in the distance. But just go right ahead and draw a solid black line up and down. You'll notice it's not perfect. That's okay. We're going to actually be filling in this shape. So the parts where not, it's not perfect, you'll be able to touch those up. You're then going to go ahead and draw a second black line. You want it to be parallel to the first. And then we're just going to fill that in. Me, my first line uh, was a little bit thicker on the outside, so I'm just going to straighten out that line a little bit more as I fill in my shape. Now, if you go to do this and you notice that your red is still wet, that just means you need to let your canvas dry a little bit first. So go ahead and pause the video, let it dry, and then you can hit play once you're ready. Top of your rectangle with just a solid line. And we now have the start of our lighthouse. Our next step is we're going to be drawing a line where we already have one. So we have the top of our rectangle. I want you to draw a line going across it. It's just going to extend a little bit past the edges. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to draw my line. And now that's the bottom line of my lighthouse. Now what you're going to do is you're going to draw a second line that's parallel to the first one, about an inch up. If you're going with a bigger lighthouse, you're going to want this line higher up. And if you're going with a smaller lighthouse, you want them to be closer together. But I'm going to go about an inch up. Just draw a line parallel to that first one. If your lines aren't totally straight, totally perfect, that's all right. All right, so now I have my two lines. They're parallel with each other and they both start and end at about the same points. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the windows of my lighthouse. We're gonna do four vertical lines to create these. Um, your first one should be farthest out you want them to be past the edge of the rectangle, but not necessarily all the way to the edge of your lines. There's our first line. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Draw another line. And then we can add some windows by doing two more lines on the inside. 
Now, if you don't have enough room um, to add two lines, that's all right. Just go ahead and add one line right down the middle. That will still look nice, too. There is the room of our lighthouse with windows. Now the last shape we have to do is just a triangle on top. You already have the bottom of the triangle, so just look at your lighthouse, find the midpoint, and put a dot. Then just connect each of the ends of your line to that dot. Now you have a triangle and you're just going to fill it in. Alright, so that's the black for now. We will be doing some more later to add some birds, but for now you can go ahead and clean your brush. And the black that I did down here is still really wet, so I'm going to hold off on doing the foam for right now, and instead we're going to go ahead and place in our sun, as long as your red is dry. Remember, if anything on your canvas that we need to paint isn't dry yet, just go ahead and pause the video and press play when your canvas is dry. For the sun, I'm using my smaller brush and I'm just using some white. And the trick to doing the curve is to try to do it in one movement. Um, there's, or, if you are too intimidated by doing it in one movement, start at the top, go, to the, go one way, and then go the other. But I'm going to go ahead and do mine in one movement. It's not going to turn out perfect. Unless you take a circle cut out, find a circle cut, lay it on your canvas and draw a line, which you can do, um, it's not going to be perfect, and that's okay. So I'm going to look at the midpoint of my water. That's where I decided I want my sun to be. Not the midpoint of the canvas, but the midpoint of where I have my water. It's right about here. I'm visually my, visualizing my sun to be smaller than my lighthouse. So it's not going to come up all the way to the top of the lighthouse. It's a setting sun. Now that I have my visualization, I go ahead and put down my curve. Now my personal advice with a curve, the best way for it to turn out is to not redo it. The very first time you do it is going to look better than any retouching or redoing you add to it. You're ultimately, I usually just end up with a big giant blob if I try to do that. So I'm going to be happy with my curve, and I'm just going to start filling it in. And while you're filling it in, I have one more question for you. So the question is, what is something you believed earlier in your career as a librarian, but think about differently now? Yes. So, that's a great question. Um, I would say something I believed very, very early in my library career. Um, before I went to library school even, um, is that there's the concept of good books and bad books, right? Um, everyone has read a book or heard someone read a book and then be like, oh my god, that book's so bad, don't read it. Um, where especially as my career has advanced and I went to library school, um, I learned about Ranganathan's five laws. One of which is that every book is reader, another of which is every reader is book. And the concept of that is, there are no bad books. It's just not the book for you. Same thing as if you're a reader, there is a book out there for you that you're gonna enjoy and you're gonna love. Um, no matter how uh, hard it might be for you to find, you can always find something you're gonna enjoy. And no matter how unlikable a book may seem, you're always gonna find someone who really does enjoy that book. So now 
now my sun is filled in. My black's still a bit wet, but I'm gonna be careful here. I'm not gonna get too close to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that second layer of foam. I'm gonna do the same technique I did before. I'm gonna get my brush wet. Um, this time, I'm gonna start down at the bottom and move my way up to the top. Again, remember you're just doing a slight jiggle. I'm going kind of near where I was before, but I'm being careful not to get too close to that black. And if you do get black on your brush, it's okay. Just go ahead and clean your brush off before you restart. Now, the first time we did this, we used all one brushes worth of white. I'm gonna actually re-dip here because I'm really liking how the heavyweight foam looks. If you prefer the thinner foam where you see more blue coming through, just don't add more white paint. But because I'm a fan, I'm gonna add some more white paint to my brush and I'm gonna keep going up. Again, I'm just jiggling my brush. I'm not rolling it. Um, I'm not pressing down too hard. I'm just jiggling as I move up. Any areas that look too thick to you, you can just go ahead and revisit. You can make your foam a little bit bigger to spread it out some more so it doesn't look so thick. And there you go. All right, so now that we've added our second layer of foam, we can go ahead and do our final step, which is just adding some happy little birds to our beach scene. I'm gonna go ahead with the black, uh, not too thick so that my lines still turn out a little thin. Anywhere up here, you can go ahead and just do a nice little V. You can make your V a little bit more curved if it's birds flapping its wings. Want, you can kind of do a grouping of them down here together. Maybe like a few little ones who are off in the distance all flying away together. And there you go. Now, with your painting, any areas where you can still see your canvas showing through, especially the black since we only did one layer of it, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and just do another coat. Anywhere you aren't happy with, go ahead and just add a little bit more paint. Um, you know, and then that's gonna make your coloring a little bit thicker, a little more solid. So the most important thing to remember about your painting is that every time you do it, it's gonna turn out different. This one here is what I painted today up on our easel. This one over here, is the one I painted the other day while I was sitting at a desk and it was laying flat, how you were painting it today. As you can see, just between these two paintings that I did both of, the sandbar is a completely different style, the sun's smaller in one, there's a different number of birds, everything's gonna turn out different. While we are painting the same painting, it's customized to each person and the nuances of how they paint and the way that they paint. So don't worry about your painting turning out exactly like the ones we have here. It's gonna be hanging up in your home and people are only gonna be seeing the one you made. They aren't gonna be comparing it to something else. So remember that this is your own original artwork and it should reflect that. Thank you for joining us. And if you like doing this virtual paint and sip and would like the library to do more, make sure you comment below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to our page. Thank you.